Sunday School, it's Pastor Chrissy here, and I have some directions to follow. Okay, so my directions say that I'm supposed to take this masking tape and get 10 feet of it without tangling it up. So, I don't know, let's try it, right? Okay, so um, 10 feet is like one, two, oh, that's not like 10 feet though, right? One, two, wait, 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 what if I, what if I stick it here and if I go like, maybe if I stick it in my knee, right? And then I can, wait, wait, oh no, it's getting tangled up. All right, is that like 10 feet? Oh man, I'm starting to get, ugh, it's sticking to my neck. Oh no, I got it in my hair. Ah, all right. Okay. Oh. Why was that so difficult for me to do? Why was that so difficult for one person to do alone? Have you ever done something that was really hard for one person to do alone? Maybe it wasn't as silly as my masking tape, but what have you done alone that was really hard? And secondly, tell me something that's hard for you to do by yourself. What is it right now? Is it riding your bike? Is it driving yourself to school? That would be really hard, right? What's really hard for you to do right now? You know, today in our Bible story, we have heard all about hard things, right? And today we're gonna learn about our Bible story that ask, where we ask, you're gonna edit this, okay. Today in our Bible story, we all have hard things to do. Sometimes we can do them alone, but sometimes it's okay to ask for help. Today, God uses someone to help his people. Let's see who it is. After Moses died, God gave Joshua the job of leading the Israelites. The first thing he did was send spies into Jericho, a city Israel was about to invade. While they were there, the two spies hid in the home of a woman named Rahab, who was a prostitute. That day, the king of Jericho heard about the spies, but Rahab hid the two spies on her roof and told the king's messengers that the spies had already left and she didn't know where they were. Then, when it was safe, she lowered the men down to the ground using a rope. Days later, Joshua led his army to the city of Jericho. They marched around the walls of the city for seven days. Then, on the seventh day, they marched around the wall seven times, blew their trumpets, and let out a loud shout. When they did, the walls of the city completely collapsed and Israel's army charged in and conquered the city. They burned the city to the ground and killed every man, woman, child and animal in the city, except for Rahab and her family. For years, Joshua and the Israelites marched through the Promised Land, defeating their enemies, killing every living thing in each city and dedicating their victories to God. Eventually, the Israelites took control of much of the Promised Land. Finally, when he was very old, Joshua gathered all of the leaders of Israel around him. Just like Moses did, he reminded everyone of all the things God had done for them. Then, he placed a large stone under an oak tree as a reminder to all to follow the laws of God. Good morning. Did you enjoy the story we saw? I wanted us to talk about a little part of it. It's about those spies again. This is the story about when the people finally did go into the promised land. But first, before we start the story, I want you to practice something. We're going to make a horn, but we're going to use our hands. So can you make your hand like this? Put your thumb out. Put your thumb up to your mouth. We're not going to suck our thumbs. We're just going to put them up to our mouths like a horn, and we're going to go, do 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 can you do that? Do, 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 do. 
Very good. Okay, just keep your horn ready, okay? Well, the people got to the promised land and they were ready to go in and they sent the spies in again. You remember what a spy is? Somebody who goes in and watches and looks and, and notices things. Well, the spies went in, but the, the place that they went into, Jericho, was not a friendly place. And so the spies had to be very careful. And they were looking for the spies. And so the spies hid at a house where a lady lived, and her name was Rahab she hid the spies in her house so the people would not find them because they really needed help. Let's blow our horn. Do, 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 do. Well, the king knew the spies were around and he sent his people to Rahab's house to get the spies. But they didn't know what to do, what to do, what to do. She said, go up on top of my house. So they went up on the roof of her house roof was flat, so they were hiding up there. And the king's people came and said, send out those people, those spies. And she said, they're not here anymore. I think they went that way. And so they said, okay. And they raced off that way. And she went up and told them that the king's spies were, were gone. But they needed help to get away. Let's blow our hands she was lucky because her house was right in the wall of the city. And so she could open a window and put a rope out the window and they could go down the rope and they would be outside the city. So she said she would help them get outside the city if when they came, when all the people of Israel came into the city, if they would take care of her and her family. And they said they would do that. So she helped them out the window, down the road, and they got away. So Joshua, do you remember him? He was one of the spies. He and the people of Israel came up to the walls of Jericho, and they got horns and they marched around the city of Jericho. Do you know how many days they marched? Seven days they marched. And as they marched around the city of Jericho, they, they beat drums and they played horns and they kept marching. But on the seventh day, when they finished, they stopped, and they all blew their horns. Are you ready to blow your horn? Do, 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 do. You know what happened? The walls of Jericho fell down, and they rushed into the city. And they went to Rahab's house, and they got her family out of the city. And so, God used Rahab to help the people of Israel and the people of Israel helped Rahab. God used them to help Rahab get out. And so we know God uses helpers. And so what we want to remember from this story that's very important is God uses helpers. And God can use you as a helper too. So think of ways that you can be brave like Rahab was brave, and the people of Israel were brave, and you can be a helper. There are things you can do to help other people. Talk to your mom and dad. Ask them ways that you can be a helper, because God can use you as a helper. Now let's think about our Bible verse. Our Bible verse tells us to be strong and very brave. So let's think, be strong. How would we say be strong? Be strong and very brave like a superhero, okay? 
Be strong and very brave. And it comes from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 7. Let's be strong and very brave. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 7. Good morning, parenting friends. Today, we're going to talk about God's power, not our own, but God's power wins the battles for us. The Bible verse is Joshua 1 through 6. Be strong and very brave. Make sure you obey the whole law, then you will have success everywhere you go. Joshua chapter 1 verse 7. So I've got some questions here if you get your Bible out and that you could ask your children about that verse because it really does talk about God's power and his power can overcome anything. Um, one of the questions you could ask is, God used Rahab, a woman with a sketchy background, to help his people in a big way. What does that tell you about God? Rahab lied to the king's men to save the Israelite spies. Was it wrong for her to lie? Will God forgive past sins? such as lying? God blessed Rahab for her faith and for helping his people, not for lying. What are some ways you can show your faith in God and help other Christians? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. I know that with school, some of the kids going back two days, some not going back at all, that again, everything is changing for us. So it's important that we divide time you know, this is the time you're going to be on the computer. This is family time. And if you get around the table and maybe you ask a couple questions about that first, you can hear what your kids have to say too. Okay, I have a little experiment we're going to do. It's kind of fun, and I think you can do it with your kids, and it'll explain some things about the Bible verse that we just read. You get a bowl, you gather a bowl, pepper, and shh, dish soap, but don't let your child see the dish soap, so hide it somewhere near you where they can't see it. Okay, now what you do is you, check, you pick a family member to sprinkle pepper on top of the water, and then you ask them what's happening, and the pepper will stay on the top. It'll stay right there on top, take up the whole center. And while your husband is talking to them about something else or your partner or your significant other, you're gonna sneak over and put a dab, a dab, friends, don't get crazy, of dishwashing liquid on your finger and then quickly dip your finger in the bowl. And when you do that, the pepper will separate and go up on the sides of the bowl. After the experiment, then you can dump the water out, wipe the bowl really good, make sure it's dry and all the soap is out of it, and then do the experiment again and show them that you put the dishwash liquid in there. You can tell them how you did it at that point. And this Bible verse is about power and believing God's power can overcome anyone else. That's how powerful he is. And I think myself, what goes along with that is faith faith and power. And right now, my husband and I are going through some things that we need his power and we need his faith. My husband is uh, waiting for uh, some results from a ultrasound and a blood test. So we're saying, God, with your power, can you help us out here? We're going to have faith. And that's what you can do. If you're having with this COVID, think God's power is going to protect, protect your family, and have faith that he will. They have to go together. Well, I hope you have a good week, and I'm gonna be doing these parenting tips and Bible lessons every week, and I hope you tune in and join me. Have a good week.